Hello and welcome to this tutorial in Premiere Pro. I'm Luisa Winters. Today I would like to continue talking about tools. Let's get to it. Last time we talked about the razor blade tool slip and slide. Today I want to talk about the pen tool. Generally speaking, we use the pen tool to create shapes that we can use for lower thirds, graphics, anything like that. So if I grab the pen tool here and then I click on the program panel, Look where my playhead is. In fact, I'm going to move it a little bit left. I'm going to move it here. And if I click and drag in the program panel, I'm creating a graphic. Now, we're going to have a tutorial just on graphics. So just for now, let's move on from the graphic. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Now, the pen tool is also used to create and modify keyframes in the timeline. So I'm going to make this track a little bit taller, and I do it by clicking and dragging here. I can right-click my clip now, and I can go Show Clip Keyframes, and let's say Opacity Keyframes. And this line that I see now is an opacity line. I can create keyframes using the pen tool. I can click here, and here, and here, and I can now lower this one and the opacity will become less. So my clip is going to become semi-transparent. I want you to notice that there are numbers that are changing as I move this keyframe up and down. If I play through this, let me just scrub it. You see how the clip is fading down and then fading back up? That's because this is an opacity line. If I had something underneath, that other something would show through. Let's see how that works. I'm going to move this up, and I'm going to expand this one here as well. And let me put this guy here so we can see it. So we see the orange or mango clip as it becomes semi-transparent, and then transparent, we see the bottom one, and then we see the orange again. It's working really well. If I want it for the orange to become completely invisible and stay invisible there for a while, I could create another adjacent keyframe to the second one, and I could just drag it down. This way, and let me make the, the bottom clip a little bit longer. So I'm switching tools as I do that. There you go. So top clip or mango becomes semi-transparent, completely transparent, and then back up again. So you can use the pen tool for that. Now, having said that, let me undo several times. Control or Command Z does that. Now, I want you to notice that I still have the selection tool active. So I don't have the pen tool active. And now if I press and hold the Command key, my mouse cursor now has a little plus sign to the right of it. I can click Creating Keyframes. So instead of using the pen tool for that, I could just use the selection tool with the modifying key, and there you have it. Now, let's continue with the next tool. If you click and hold on the pen tool, you're going to see that there is a rectangle tool there, and we can use this also for graphics. I can click and drag and create a graphic, and again, I'm going to have a tutorial just on graphics, but Let's just go over this uh, really quickly in case you need to do a lower third or a bar or any kind of other graphic. You can change the color of this simply by selecting it. And notice that this is a new clip that got added to the timeline. Now, you can select this clip. You can go to the Effect Controls panel, and you can expand where it says Shape. In here, I think it's pretty self-explanatory where you can change the color. For example, this is gray. Well, there's a fill, and it's the color gray. So we can click there and say I'm going to make it red, reddish. Click OK. My bar now changed color. Let me go ahead and delete this. If you click and hold on the tool again, you're going to see the ellipse tool. And this does the same thing, except instead of drawing a rectangle, it's drawing an ellipse. And notice that it kept the red color that I changed the rectangle into. Let's go ahead and delete this, and we're going to talk about the other tools. 
The hand tool and the zoom tool are the ones that come next. The hand tool is very easy. I can use it to navigate the timeline without moving the playhead. It's actually rather useful. If you click and hold, the zoom tool is used so that you can zoom in or out. In fact, I don't really use this tool because I find that using the plus and the minus keys in the main keyboard is a little bit faster. Also, don't forget the backslash key that is above the enter or return key in your main keyboard. So I find those a little bit more convenient, but there it is in case you want to use it. And then finally, we have the type tool and the vertical type tool. And I'm not really going to discuss those right now because like I said before, we are going to have a tutorial just on text and graphics. All right, this brings me to the end of the tools in Premiere Pro and the end of this tutorial. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time.